Madam Chair, we are now live. Good afternoon, I'm Chair Tanya Rodriguez and I would like to welcome you to the April 21st, 2022 Human Relations Commission virtual meeting. We're coming to you live from the Cherokee homelands where the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians remain a sovereign nation to this day. We will now call our meeting to order. Duties of the Human Relations Commission of Asheville include, but are not limited to, one, make policy recommendations to city council, which promote and improve human relations and advance equity in the city. Two, support the city's Office of Equity and Inclusion. Three, provide a forum where residents can raise issues and complaints relating to human relations in the city. Four, engage the community regarding the utilization of city funded programs and policies for the promotion of human relations and five, promote and improve human relations and advance equity in the following areas, public safety, education, art and cultural opportunities, economic development, health and human services and housing. All committee members and staff are participating virtually. We appreciate your patience as we temporarily conduct our HRCA meetings remotely. We are streaming live on our virtual engagement hub, which is accessible through the virtual engagement hub link on the front page of the city website and also linked on the commission page. We also have an option for the public to listen live by phone by dialing 855-925-2801. Once again, that number is 855-925-2801 and entering meeting code star 9723. For those of you who plan to speak during our live public comment today, you will need to hit star three to be put in the speaker queue. For those of you out there with us today, welcome. I will now go through and introduce all commission members, staff and guests who are participating virtually. For our commission members, please make sure to mute your microphone if you are not speaking. When you have a question or would like to speak, click raise hand and when recognized by me or Alana or Sarah, uh, please remember to uh, unmute your microphone and mute your microphone when you are done speaking. Commission members, as I call your name, please say a quick hello. Uh, Chair Tanya Rodriguez, uh, hello. Vice Chair Brandon Oliver. Hello. Commissioner Daniel Young. We have some. Yes. Commissioner Melanie Noyes. Espinoza. Hello, I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Harvey Dean Harold. Here. Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Devolo. It's okay. She, we got a wave. <laughs> and Susie Chandler. Thank you, Chair Rodriguez. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Not present is uh, Commissioner Dolores Venable. Uh, Commissioner Amanda Brimsa, Commissioner Crystal Michelle Reed, Commissioner Alfred Green, and Commissioner Emma Nicole Worthy are all absent today. Do we have a quorum? Three. We have quorum. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, welcome, and thank you for being here, uh, our council, city council liaison, uh, Councilwoman Kim Rooney. And we'd like to thank our city staff members, Alana Schmidt and uh, Sarah Gross. At, uh, Elena, pardon me. <laughs> um, 
So uh, to start, let's see, to help our audience follow along, I'll state each section of the agenda out loud. Again, I ask committee members to click raise hand to be recognized to speak. Please state your name each time you comment. Just a reminder that the public is listening on the phone and this keeps the public up to date on the order of the meeting and who is commenting or speaking. All right, we have a quorum for approval of minutes for 317 for our meeting in March 17, 2022. Uh, call for a motion to approve minutes. So moved. Approve, David. I'll take the second. Thank you, Harvey. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got a second. Let's take a roll call vote for the commissioners that are present. Uh, Commissioner Susie Chandler. I was second on the motion. Okay, great. Uh, roll call vote. Motion approved. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, roll call vote. Yay or nay? Yay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Harvey Harold. Yay. Commissioner uh, Melanie Noyes Espinosa. Yay. Commissioner Tiffany Flurney Debelo. Yay. Commissioner Daniel Young. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he gave me a gust that my old mama. <laughs> Vice Chair Brandon Oliver. Yay. Wonderful. Um, Chair Tony Rodriguez, yay. Uh, motion approved. Minutes approved. Moving on to our next item up for business. Staff updates. Thank you very much for your votes. Staff updates. Um, Elena, Policy Equity Analysis Group, Office of Equity and Inclusion Newsletter, Complaint Inquiry Form from Residents to City, Children and Nature Network Grant, and Future Opportunities for Additional Funding and Technical Support. The mic is yours. Thank you. Um, staff updates from the Office of Equity and Inclusion. So uh, we are forming a policy equity analysis group um, with several representatives from different city departments uh, to come together and analyze existing and proposed policies through an equity lens. Um, this is a, a new group and our first meeting is later this month. Uh, we're very excited to have um, more updates to share as soon as we convene and decide how we want to move forward as a group um, with policy analysis through an equity lens for the city. This Office of Equity and Inclusion will also have uh, an equity and inclusion newsletter from our office um, to be shared internally and externally to keep you abreast of updates from our office. Um, and that will be sent on a monthly basis to begin with for the first few months. And then we'll later move on to a every other month update from our office through this newsletter. The first one should also be sent later this month in April. Um, the update regarding a complaint slash inquiry form for residents to the city. Um, it could be used for complaints. It could also be used just to connect with the Office of Equity and Inclusion, ask questions and that sort of thing. So it will be a Google form to be uh, hosted on our city's website on the Equity and Inclusion web page. Um, so as soon as someone visits our web page, they'll be able to see the link to this form and drop us a note, um, ask us a question. I'm wanting this thing, but I'm not sure where to go to get it. And we'll be able to reply um, and direct them to the appropriate resource or update them, them on whatever um, issues they may be interested in learning more about or connecting them to the appropriate resources to do so. I also have an exciting um, share for you all, uh, the Children and Nature Network. Um, the city has won a grant from them. It's about $10,000 um, towards youth development and nature-based programming. It was originally won um, under the Nature Center. Back when I worked um, with the Nature Center, we won it. And I was able to bring the grant with me to the Office of Equity and Inclusion and make the funds and the technical assistance available to other youth programs with the city um, that can align with that nature-based programming. Uh, the Children in Nature Network 
um, also offers some additional opportunities for future funding related to um, racially equitable connections to nature for children living in cities. Um, and there's a link on your agenda, which will take you to that web page if you're interested in exploring it more. There are currently no requests um, for proposals from the Children in Nature Network, but it is something to keep in mind for future opportunities. Um, we're considering using the funds um, in ways that can support Kayla, um, the City of Asheville Youth Leadership Academy. There's also the Young Naturalist Program at the Nature Center um, and our other parks and recreation youth programming. And that is all from me. Thank you. Commissioner Debelo. Commissioner Debelo? I just had a question. Um, going back to that work group through the equity department, is that just city staff or is that something public? As it is envisioned currently, it is city staff. Will you um, guys be reaching out to community for public input? That is a great question. We're going to be discussing a lot at our first meeting. I'll bring this up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. And I had the same question, uh, Commissioner Devola. Would we be a part of that um, reviewing the policy? for outcomes that are not based, um, that are not equitable. Uh, so uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's that's a, that's a very powerful, um, insightful opportunity that we might be able to have here to collaborate with the city and, and with the HRC. Right? Um, are there any other questions uh, re regarding staff updates? Moving on to our next item up for business, unfinished business. Um, Elena, we've got the vote on the proposed changes to HRCA rules of procedure. Um, it's an updated version. I hope everybody got a chance to review the updated version in the email. Um, action needed. And so it looks like we are up for a vote with that, which is fabulous. Um, so, uh, Elena, would you like to elaborate on our uh, updated changes, uh, the changes to the HRCA rules and procedure, and uh, what happens next? Maybe uh, Councilwoman Rooney might um, offer uh, insight to where it goes after this. Yes, so it was included in your meeting materials sent out in your reminder email. So I hope you've had a chance to look at that ahead of the meeting. Um, the major change um, that you're really voting on is going to be in the membership list, um, removing the specific numbers related to who um, is, can be, and should um, be a part of the Human Relations Commission removing those numbers in order to expand um, and make it more available and also adding some additional suggestions for membership related to serving on HRCA. Um, a lot of the other uh, red ink that you see in the document is added um, or changes for clarification of existing rules and procedures. Um, if you vote to approve these changes, um, the Article 3, which is related to um, the membership, I believe, will go to council in order to be approved to change the ordinance um, so that it's changed officially there as well. And I will give the floor to Councilwoman Roney if uh, she would like to elaborate any further. So what I'll suggest that if there's a recommendation from this board today, then I would of course send that recommendation and my liaison report to the full council. And um, I would anticipate that it would be seen on the boards and commissions committee agenda before going to the full council, which is why I would make that recommendation to the chair who is the vice mayor. Thank you very much, Commissioner Chandler. Thank you. Um, I um, did review it and I love I like the new language that was not specific about the numbers of um, of uh, uh, minorities and um, underrepresented populations. Um, I, I, I thought that would be really effective and probably a little bit more representative of our population. 
My question is, and I'm really asking this of the of the whole commission because I'm not attached to it one or the other, um, but there was no mention of white members. Uh, my people get all the fun stuff. So. I don't know if that's a thing that needs to be included or if it was specifically excluded um, because the language wanted someone who also qualified for one of the other options. Like, for instance, I am white and also um, an LGBTQ person. So um, I don't know. Can you talk a little bit more about the design around that or what does that mean? Does that mean anything? Do you want to take it? <laughs> Do you want well, to take I'm it? That, um, the Blue Ribbon Commission was a group of um, community members that helped to inform um, the structuring of the original form of this committee. And uh, that was pretty much time on council. Um, so perhaps it is a good question to ask for updates from the uh, community who participated in that Blue Ribbon Commission to see how things are going from a public perspective, um, that might be something that the chair could invite members of that group to present at a future meeting. Um, but I took it as um, an opportunity to ensure that under or unrepresented voices were at the table um, for this commission. That makes total sense. I just wanted to make sure we weren't like signing ourselves up to, uh, because you know, in Asheville, white and weird is not a minority. Um, I didn't just want to make sure we weren't sending, changing the ordinance in such a way that um, if there were uh, you know, the, you know, people who wanted to apply for the commission that they had to fit one of those. And if they were just plain, <laughs> it sounds so terrible the way I'm describing it. If I think that, um, bail me out. <laughs> I think one of the other things for consideration is that um, as we work on human relations commission or human relations issues in our city together, that we bring a variety of lived and professional experiences across identities. Okay, that's helpful, that's helpful. Um, and there, uh, other than youth, there wasn't a, um, a mention about age, like a generational spread. Uh, and I found that interesting. Um, I, was that intentional or just what the Blue Ribbon Committee advised based on what our, our specific commission needs. Once again, I think this is a really great opportunity to ask about those outcomes um, since we've had a few years of this new HRCA commission um, and to invite, invite the Blue Ribbon Committee members to um, offer feedback and clarity. Um, what I will say is I have found it very rare in our boards and commissions to have folks under 25 represented in our boards and commissions. So it may be another opportunity um, to name where there is a deficit in voices. Thank you for fielding those. I appreciate it. Uh, Sarah. Um, and I'm new to this conversation. <clears throat> Sorry for jumping in. Um, I do, Elena, this might be more for us on the operational side, but I also want to note that there is a special and separate um, application form for this committee that will also need to be revised. So we'll just have to keep that in mind as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do you feel complete, Commissioner Chandler? Yes, thank you. Are there any further questions regarding to uh, unfinished business? Oh, Commissioner uh, Spinoza? Yeah, um, is this... Um, ready right now? Um, are we voting on this or are, is there still an opportunity to make suggestions or ask questions? Absolutely opportunity to make suggestions and ask questions before we vote. Okay, I just noticed in Article 3, um, Section 1 um, B for um, Latinx, Latino, or Latina individuals. Is there a reason that it's just O or A? Did we leave out a non-binary option on purpose? Or because um, you like leaving Latinx or Latin A with an E at the end? Um, those are two, two options. I personally don't have a preference for either way, um, but just making sure that that's included. <clears throat> That does appear to be a typo. Okay. That does appear to, because that was something that we did discuss 
um, and that didn't come up in this. So thank you for catching that. Yeah, I remember you bringing that up, so. Yeah, so I wonder if maybe we pause this vote um, until next month and then bring this back with, um, with it in a complete form without any typos so as to not um, present something that's incomplete to the boards and commissions and to council and members. Would that be something that that would work for everybody just to make sure? Because that's a pretty big typo to send off um, to miss, especially after we all um, discussed it. Council Um I'll, I'll add that being um, new to this the liaison role since this board was established, um, in addition to inviting members of the Blue Ribbon Commission to a conversation, um, we could also, from a staff and liaison level, um, collect the reports on the intentions of the Blue Ribbon Committee and share that documentation with this group. Um, and that may help to add to the understanding of the why. Thank you very much, Councilwoman Rooney. There's a pterodactyl in the <laughs> I'm so, I apologize uh, for the distraction. Um, okay, uh, moving on. We'll we'll postpone this vote until. Are there next any week. other questions? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Are there any other questions or recommendations that we want to talk about before moving on, um, so I can get a complete um, list of of edits to make. All right, thank you. Moving on to new business. Um, new business is um, heartbreaking. It's a vote to replace the following members of the HRCA. Uh, action is needed today. This is based on our rules and procedures of not um, participating or being present for at least I believe it's 75% of the meeting um, within a year. And these are two people that have not shown up to any meetings for two years. So um, might be time to make space for people who would like to join the HRCA. And so I'd like to call for a motion for the removal of um, Alfred Green uh, and Emma Nicole Worthy. So these would be two separate votes, correct? All right, so uh, motion to remove Alfred Green from the HRCA. Commissioner Chandler? I'm unfamiliar with um, this this portion of um, proceeding, I guess, is, I mean, is it necessary to remove in order to be replaced? And it is. Oh, okay. And just so y'all are aware, we have attempted to contact each of these individuals. Um, and I, one has been unresponsive. The other has um, expressed that they have not been able to commit to the time required for the HRCA. Um, but they didn't complete a uh, resignation. And so that's why we have to vote. Okay. This is Kim. I'll just add that I have um, both in my volunteer efforts as an advisory board in the past, but also I've seen this have to happen in other situations. Um, when folks aren't able to participate, then it um, makes it hard for a group to have a quorum and to do their work. But I have seen um, volunteers resubmit applications when they are able to participate. And so this is simply a matter of procedure and um, hope, hopefully um, folks will be able to participate in another way at another time. Um, but this is just simply a matter of making sure that this group can meet and um, work effectively. Thank you for that explanation. 
Thank you. And also in Article 3 in membership, Section 3 under attendance, the failure of any commission member to attend 75% of the meetings of the commission held during a 12-month period, unless excused, may be grounds for removal. A member must attend 50% of a meeting in order to be considered in attendance. And so these are two people that haven't attended a meeting in two years. And so um, I'll repeat the motion one more time, calling for a motion for the removal of Alfred Green from the HRCA. Can I get a second? I second. Thank you very much, Commissioner Harold. Roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Chandler. Yay. All right. Heartbreaking. Commissioner Harold. Yay. Commissioner Noyes Espinoza. <coughs> Yay. Commissioner Debolo. Yay. Commissioner Young. Yes. Vice Chair Brandon Oliver. Y yay. <clears throat> so moved. Alfred Green uh, is no longer with the HRCA. Commissioner Young. Uh, yes, I got a question about this. Uh, since we're doing this, are we? What about the? Uh, I do know that some of these commissioners out of town are, are getting paid stipends for uh, what we're doing. Are we? Are we voting on that? Are we going to address this? I mean, y'all want to be a hold, hold on, hold on. There's a difference between the state, um, state level human relations commission and the volunteer commissions um, that are within the cities. So if if we were in a state level HRC um, and there's a specific office that is devoted and, and you know worked by grants and all of those things, that's one thing, but we're a city commission, which is a little different. And so we're volunteer uh, commission here. Um, Commissioner, uh, Council Maroon. Sorry for the um, all the interruptions today. Um, I just wanted to add that there are equity stipends being considered in cities across the state for their volunteer advisory boards. Durham is one of them that currently has a process for that. Um, that would be an excellent recommendation that could come out of the improving HRCA committee updates. Um, however, there um, is a process on this agenda right now, so I'll just defer to the chair. Well, also there's the restructuring that we got to look at too, you know, so there's a couple of things that are involved with that and that maybe um, we'll have a look into see how that can come about because I had no idea that that was something that was happening statewide, that there are more equity uh, stipends that are opening up uh, for volunteering on boards and commissions. And so if that's something that we can bring in, um, we'll definitely support that. If you can do the work, uh, Commissioner Young, to bring in more information on that, um, and that maybe we can do something about that in our uh, working group and improving HRCA, I think that that would be a really good thing to do. Um, moving on to our next vote, Emma Nicole Worthy, um, motion to remove Emma Nicole Worthy from the HRCA. Can I get a second, please? I second. Thank you, Commissioner Harold. Uh, roll call vote, uh, Commissioner Harold. Yay. Commissioner Chandler? Yay. Commissioner Noyes Espinosa? Yay. Commissioner Debolo? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Vice Chair Brennan Oliver? 
Yay. So moved. Emma Nicole Worthy, thank you. And Alfred Green, thank you for your service and your willingness to volunteer to participate with the HRCA. Next item up for business are committee updates. Um, we'll start with the intergovernment relations. Uh, we've got uh, Tiffany, me, and Brandon. Oh, uh, Sarah, you have your hand. Just real quick, and because I'm here, um, I do want to note that we are advertising for the commission currently. So we'll add those two seats. And just want to encourage everyone to um, please spread the word and encourage people to apply. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, intergovernment relations, uh, Tiffany, B. Brandon, any updates um, from intergovernment relations? So uh, myself and Madam Chair, we, we sat on the, um, we just attended those meetings pertaining to the, the restructuring of the boards and commissions. And the next steps is creating a, um, a, small, a small group that'll go ahead and decide which boards and commissions will be um, dissolved into the bigger pockets of the different structuring. Um, the, so this special group, and I might just be saying it wrong, it's like a steering committee. It's open to the public. It's open to um, our current commissioners as well. So if anyone wants to get, if anyone is interested in having a closer look um, and at least leaning their voice into how these boards and commissions are going to be restructured, um, just please let myself or Madam Chair know so that we can make sure that you're on the list to get those emails. Thank you, Commissioner Devolo. Well said. <laughs> um, Vice Chair Brandon Oliver. You're muted. Been doing this long enough. Sorry, y'all. Um, so it's official that there will be the dilution of the boards. So, no. Sarah? Can I chime in again? And, and again, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here, um, catch some of these conversations. Um, no, nothing is official. Um, that, um, the next step is that working group that Tiffany was referring to. Um, we have set that first meeting, which is May 5th. Um, please encourage the more the, mer the merrier. And that's where we hope to just um, to really talk about some of these details. Again, nothing has been decided. Um, it is ultimately a council decision, and we hope that this group can um, help us decide ways to move forward and what could, how we could restructure the full system, so not just any one board, um, all of our boards and commissions to work as a system. But again, um, a lot, a lot to figure out, and we really hope that this working group, again, open to everybody, um, can help us start thinking about these things and to make make some kind of recommendation that would go to council. Has have you has anyone can answer this received um, positive support for this? You mean from community? Yeah. Yes. Or just not just, as much as can. Uh, okay. Not not as much. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Devolo, um, uh, would you like to go? And then Commissioner Noise of My, I was just going on to a different subject. So if Commissioner Noyes had something pertaining to this subject right here, I can, I can wait. Mine's is just something else. Yeah, really quick, Brandon. Um, I had gone to a um, one of the very first meetings. Um, for people, I think in board boards and advisory commissions um, to attend, and I did not hear a lot of support. And what it sounded like was moving towards decentralizing, or no, sorry, centralizing a lot of how the boards and commissions works. So like dissolving a bunch and just giving kind of like a fast track to city council members directly, and there's not really a vote on it. Um, but they still want our input. So it sounds, from from what I gathered, it seemed like they were just going to do it anyway, 
but they want to hear from us. So that's thank you so I much for yeah. that real talk right there. That's what I was <laughs> yeah. asking because I've been a yeah. part of other other meetings where they've been talking about this. And for us to move on to the next step with the working group mm -hmm. tells my brain that this is in the process still. So if we haven't voted on anything yet, then why go ahead and set everything up for it? I'm I'm just curious where the transparency yeah. is and all we don't this. we like, don't get a it. vote. <laughs> okay, so we just really are wasting our time when we have these meetings and they ask our opinion because it's the ball's still rolling. That's mm -hmm. what I don't appreciate about the city of Asheville. Yes, thank you for being open and direct with that because that's what I was looking for. Of course. I just wanted to still continue to have the conversation about the intergovernmental um, commit working group that we have. So this is just a, a different type of update. So um, just as the HR, HRCA commission member, I've also been um, chosen to sit on the human relations, I'm sorry, the reparations commission of Asheville um, through the education department as an alternate. So um, the thing about that is that we'll be able to kind of like have some information, although this commission and the work groups is going to be public, we'll still be able to have some more insight as to the workings and inner workings of this commission, just for transparency and accountability purposes. But I just wanted to share that with the um, with HRCA. Thank you, Commissioner Devola. Commissioner Chandler? My question was back to the consolidation of um, the different boards and commissions. And I'm wondering for our commission, if it makes sense to put the effort and energy into recruiting people who may be expunged in a few months, uh, since it looks like the city doesn't care what we're, um, what we really feel about it, it's gonna happen anyway. I, I had some people in mind and I'm thinking if, if this city really is going forward um, on these the steps, does it make sense to ask my resources to put the time and effort into applying if they're, any, any guidance on that? My my take on that is if if we make this commission real strong, it would be difficult for it to be dissolved. But we got to have the participation, and we have to have the 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 um, the working togetherness um, that this this commission has the potential of to build kind of like a force field <laughs> around it so that it doesn't get sucked into wow. um, that. So by all means, if you know good people that you're willing to recommend to participate in the HRCA, go ahead and do that. And those baby coups are ridiculous. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> she's not cooing. She is <laughs> unhappy because she's tired. Oh. Hello. Say hi, Ruthie. Hello. <laughs> yeah. But so, I'm just walking her to get her to sleep. So thank you for answering that. Yeah. Any other questions or comments relating to uh, intergovernment relations um, before we move on to our community engagement working group? All right. Moving on to our community engagement working group. Uh, that's Susie, me, and um, Commissioner Tiffany and uh, Commissioner Harold. Are there any updates on community engagement? I would like to see us get into booths. I don't understand how come we weren't in Hemp Fest. We weren't in what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Harvey. Hemp Fest. Yeah. You know, that is some that is some prime community engagement in there that we can have affected in a powerful way. Um, yeah, we also weren't at the Black Business Expo. I, I was there for work, but... Yeah. Brennan was, Brennan was there. Oh, oh cool. How I did mean, I not see you? What do we need I, to do to get into these we all look the same. in there? <laughs> I can say that. Um, uh, it's still going to Saturday, and I received an email from the RJC earlier this week about um, volunteering or anything. So I'm pretty sure if we reach out, we have two people on our board or on our commission right now who are extremely tied up with YMI. So 
we could probably get down there asking them how they did it. Like I said, there's two more days left. Great idea, though. I think we should be out there and about. We've got to get some face. Absolutely. Thank you. For Where is that you thought? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Harold. Where is that you Brandon's talking about? It's at Pack Pack Square, right? Yeah, Pack Square. It's happening. It started Wednesday and it goes until Saturday. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I'm cool with that, but that's just what I read. And uh, okay. I read it. Okay. Um, moving forward on, well, with the community engagement thing. Uh, whenever someone hears about something uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, something for the community that's happening, wouldn't it be a good idea for you to get in touch with uh, just say Susie, Tanya, Tiffany, Ivan, and, and myself, or just get a uh, set an email out to the whole committee uh, if anybody would like to enjoin it. I think that would be better for anybody in the whole committee if they wanted to enjoin it. Let them be have the choice of enjoining or not. And then there's another. Uh, like we have community announcements, so I thought we'd bring it up then, but this is just toward the goals that we set. That's what I thought that was going to be for the day until we got the community announcements, and then that was going to come into another thing. But uh, since we're on it, I'm going to go ahead and bring up what I had as far as, you know, uh, something for the commission to do this Saturday, and it relates to the Peace Gardens and Market that's happening uh, this Saturday on Burton Street and at uh, Bryant Street and Downey Street across. And that's for the Hood Huggers International. That's, they have the tours and the Hood Tours as well, but they have a lot of plants and it's a lot of things going on with it. And I was, I was going, I was going to try to go myself. I'm not going to try, I'm going to go. It's from 11 to six. And you have live music, public shows, plants. The main thing I think is the plants and uh, vendors as well. But I was going to bring that up, you know, if anybody wanted to go. But as far as the uh, community engagement, uh, it's a work in progress. I've given my contact information to Brenda to disseminate to the rest of the committee. And uh, I gave my contact information to Commissioner Debelo as far as, you know, uh, disseminated to those on the community engagement and a place to have a place to uh, have a meeting. And I also gave it to Brenda. And that would uh, be, as far as uh, going on down, that would be for uh, the examining systems. I'm just getting it out of the way now. But that's uh, what I have now as far as community engagement. That way I don't be disturbing anybody else. Thank you very much, Commissioner Harold. I'd like to call a point of order um, just to keep in alignment with the agenda. Um, and if there's no more um, uh, updates for community engagement from you, uh, Tiffany Debelo, we'll move on to um, our next item. Uh, Commissioner Debelo, are you, are you good with- Well, I just uh, was gonna- just agreeing with Harvey and then also adding more clarification that the celebration is a liberation celebration for hood huggers and it's Friday to Sunday. Um, so also thinking in terms of this community engagement group, is there a way that we can have like a one cheater or some type of document that we can maybe even pull from the city website so that when we do engage in these um, spaces, we have something to at least pass on so people can walk away with. And if we don't, can we create that? Okay, yeah. That's a great idea, uh, Commissioner Double um, And I see Elena dutiously writing that down. So um, if there are no more um, specific to community engagement updates, for the working group itself, not community announcements, <laughs> community engagements and point of order, stay on topic. Um, Daniel Young, uh, Commissioner Young, does your 
a question specifically relate to community engagement working group update. Uh, yeah, my question is about the community engagement. How we are uh, making decisions on our community and then we're not even engaging with the community. I mean, we don't come out to the communities. Our communities don't even know what our positions are. What are we doing? What are we speaking on? So, so we need to be there. I agree with Tiffany and whatever else that she needs support. We need support here at the YMI. It's a lot of organizations need needs help. If we're going to make decisions on our community, be a part of the community. Thank you very much, Commissioner Young. Um, moving on to the next uh, commission update, uh, addressing housing issues. The working group is uh, Susie, uh, me, Tanya Rodriguez, and Melanie, uh, Commissioner Noez Espinoza. Are there any uh, updates from the addressing housing issues working group? Yes, so in the meeting materials, you'll see the same recommendation that uh, was brought up last meeting. There has not been any changes to it yet. Um, Commissioner Harold, I still remember your suggestions and I'm remembering that. However, I believe and other community members believe right now, as far as sanctuary camping goes, um, the city just might not be at a place to actually put something like this on the table quite yet. There's a lot of groundwork that needs to be done. Um, as far as data goes, um, most uh, city council members are not convinced. Um, so, and it, and it sounds like using public property is going to be a harder of a pull than than finding someone with private land. So there's there's just a lot going on, but I'll be sure to let y'all know. Um, as this moves along, um, kind of where we're at. And, and, and if the recommendation is actually ready um, before a certain meeting, I'll send out an email so that y'all can read it ahead of time, if that's helpful. Um, but yeah, that's it right now. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Noyes Espinoza. Um, moving on to examining systems. That is um, Commissioner uh, Harvey Harold, uh, Commissioner uh, Venable, and Commissioner Young. Any updates on examining systems working group? Uh, still a, pro a working work in progress as far as um, things going on examining systems. Unless uh, Commissioner Young has anything to add. I haven't been in touch with Dolores. <laughs> what uh, what are systems are we examining? The school systems or everything in general? Well, uh, examining the school system, uh, we need more volunteers, more help with our kids. We need more teachers that look like us in these spaces. I went well, to that, uh, yeah. I went to Marfa Star and they had. A whole staff full of white teachers, no black teachers, only a black person was working in the cafeteria. How is anybody going to teach our kids about history that don't look like us? So that's the exam I'm seeing. I see this every day because I'm at the high school, in the middle schools, in the elementary with our kids. The teachers are getting burned out. Our kids are being singled out. The teachers are doing bullying. So, I mean, until we address this situ situation, we're going to continue going in this in this circle. I mean, if we're going to be this bull, we need to be at these schools. Uh, thank you, Kim Ronan, for showing up. We had a march out with the kids at the high school, and the schools took homeroom from the kids that they were benefiting from this event. Now they don't even have it. Programs are being removed from our kids. Our kids' voices are not being heard. So <laughs> that's, that's what I'm seeing. Thank you for your service you. and dedication to doing that, Commissioner Young. You have a unique voice that brings attention and awareness to the discrepancies and the disparities that are happening in town with our children. So I appreciate you being the voice and the eyes and the ears of what's really going on. Um, 
If there are no further updates, uh, Commissioner Harrow? Yes. Uh, I didn't want to leave Commissioner Young hanging out there. Uh, it's true, my brother, as far as, you know, the things that you're talking about. Uh, I would still would like to get Dolores' intake on that, and we can formulate some systems as far as, you know, going into it. But uh, what you brought up is very commendable. And we can move on that, Tanya. Thank you, Commissioner Harold. Uh, improving HRCA, that's uh, you, Commissioner Young and Commissioner Venable. Uh, are there any updates on improving HRCA? Um, Not at the moment. I don't take care of the kids. I'll, I'll work with the team of people. All right, thank you very much. Um, on the next item that completes our uh, committee updates, next item on our agenda are community announcements. We already spoke a little bit about community announcements and what's happening this weekend. Um, are there further community announcements that you would like for uh, Asheville and beyond to know of um, who are listening and watching this meeting. Tanya. Commissioner. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, like I uh, had mentioned, Apple mentioned uh, the Peace Gardens that's going on this weekend, you know, Saturday, but this is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing. But the reason I got information on it was a friend of mine, she's into uh, gardening and all that stuff, real heavy, and she's been down there before, but she, I got an invite last night to this, but uh, if any more commissioners were going to be there, I plan on being there Saturday. And it's from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday. But I was just wanting to put uh, that out there because I think it's going to be a worthy cause. And for commissioners to be there would be a great thing. Uh, I want to regress for one second. Uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Debelo did invite uh, the commission uh, at our last meeting to come to the YMI Center. And I was waiting for some more commissioners to get there besides her and I, but we, I didn't see any. Then uh, she and I were the only ones that I saw. But uh, I just thought I'd go ahead and mention that, but that's the community announcement that I would like to make. And whenever I hear the hear one, I, I would love to be there. And I went when she asked us, asked the community uh, commissioners to come. I did. Thank you very much, Commissioner Harold. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Brennan Oliver. my job through UNITE as a community health worker. We are holding up children, Children's Day. It's gonna be happening Sunday at the Emma Methodist Church, which is right on Hill Road by the Board of Education. It's two to five, we're gonna have music. There's gonna be free food, door prizes, pinatas, games, and resources specifically for the underserved community. So that will be happening Sunday, the 24th from two to four. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Brandon Oliver. Uh, Commissioner Harold, did you have uh, another? Your hand is up. There you go. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Commissioner. Elena? Thank you. Um, could I ask Commissioner Oliver to name the name of the event 
um, the date and the location again, please. There was a hiccup in the internet and I missed it. Yes, ma'am. It is a celebration of Children's Day. And it is Sunday the 24th from 2 to until 5. And located am, at? It's located at Emma United Methodist Church, which is, is 59 Adams Hill Road. If I get tech savvy over the next hour and I'm able to get this to scan in my scanner, I will send it out to the commission. Thank you. Or, you're welcome. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you, Elena, for catching that. Um, Commissioner Noyes Espinoza. Yes, so on um, Thursday, April 28th, uh, WinCap is hosting um, a Dining Out for Life fundraiser, and there's a big list of um, awesome restaurants. And I think there's a couple bars on there too, but if you order from there, a percentage goes to WinCap, uh, who serves our community with HIV and AIDS. Um, so yeah, I don't know how to get this list out to y'all, but if you wanted to go out to eat or get takeout uh, next Thursday night, that would be super helpful. Um, WinCap usually does this every year, but with COVID has um, taken a pause on it for a couple of years and has missed out on a lot of fundraising money um, that they usually would get in normal times. Um, and it's really, really helpful. Proceeds go to um, folks who can't make rent or utility bills or just just need some extra help. So, um, yeah, that would be great. Um, Elena or um, Tanya or somebody, if you want to let me know how to get this list of restaurants out or a flyer or something, uh, I would love to share. Thank you, Commissioner Noyes Espinosa. Commissioner Harold? Yes, uh, Commissioner Noyes. Is there a set price on the uh, plates or whatever? I don't think so. I don't think there is. Is there a if I can jump menu? In. Is there a set menu? Um, really, Commissioner Harold, how it works is there are restaurants that participate with their typical menu. Um, some are open for lunch, some are open for dinner some or both, um, and then you just order whatever is on their menu that you want and a portion of the proceeds goes to WinCap and someone comes around and talks to you a little bit about WinCap while you're there. My office used to do it every year and we've missed it um, the past couple of years. I want to say gosh, 2019 was the last one they had. Uh, but yeah, you, there's, there's probably 50 or so restaurants across the city that participate um, just with their regular menu and they agree to donate a portion of the proceeds and um, you get a little chat and card while you're there. It's a really cool. So, so they'll be in different parts of the city and not in one particular place. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Lots of restaurants all over, and the and the the website has it broken down like downtown, east, west, things like that to help you find the restaurants that are participating. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. Just plan to eat out on Thursday. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you very much for that explanation, um, Commissioner Chandler and uh, and uh, Commissioner Harold for um, uh, seeking elaboration on uh, what's, what sounds like a pretty amazing event. And uh, looking forward to showing up on Saturday at 11 for, for this beautiful event. It looks really amazing. Um, uh, thank you very much. That concludes our community announcements. If there are no further community announcements. Moving on to our next item in our agenda, uh, live public comment. Are there, is there anybody in the queue, Elena? Sarah, <clears throat> sorry, Sarah here. There are no callers in the queue. Oh, part of me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Um, moving on to our future agenda items, uh, training in city mandated equity and inclusion process, which is what you were asking about uh, with the equity analysis, um, Commissioner Debelo, accountability pipeline for complaints process for city of Asheville for city employees and resident complaints, LGBTQIA discrimination protections and complaints process. Uh, 
to be really transparent about that, bring those updates to uh, Asheville. ADA compliance and complaints process, be really transparent about that, bring updates to uh, Asheville. Uh, creation of volunteer mentorship, to, mentorship program to support returning citizens, public safety, fair and equitable housing, and environmental climate concerns. Just wanted to make sure that you, everybody in here got the email about the housing meeting that's coming up with the state HRCA. That's going to be a really good meeting to attend um, to learn more about uh, fair and equitable housing from uh, the state level HRCA. Uh, Commissioner Noise Espinosa. Yeah, so I actually attended one of the meetings um, with Jack Horowitz, or I can't remember exactly what his name was, um, but he was with the Human Relations Division of Durham, and it sounds like Durham really has got it figured out over there um, as far as their division goes. They take complaints for fair housing, um, what, what do you call it, like, like breaches or, um, yeah, complaints from folks in the community when landlords are not upholding um that so yeah i just wanted to say thank you for sharing that i did go to that and i reached out to jack um for the video for that video it was about like an hour and a half long but it was really really helpful and a really good start um for a working group to kind of take and run with wonderful thank you for showing up for that commissioner noise espinoza your service is always amazing and inspirational um, if there are no further items up for business, um, uh, like oops, Commissioner Heron. Yes, uh, before you adjourn, Commissioner, uh, I was want to go over one thing before we adjourned. Since we had a big hiccup uh, today before we started, uh, hope, hopefully we, we did get a learning situation out of this. And next time we can start on time. Thank you. What are you part of that day? Okay. Thank you very That's much, Commissioner Harold. The digital age brings technical difficulties and sometimes they're beyond uh, anyone's control. And so sometimes the compassion for those technical difficulties uh, can bring us back to uh, okay, I'm the going human back level to the that is um, we times, we get us a ticket for free. Um, not found in, in the digital spaces. So um, thank you for that. And the next meeting will we'll be on time and hopefully um, live. We don't know. Maybe. What, what's the word on that, uh, Councilwoman Rooney? I don't have an update yet on when advisory boards will be meeting um, back in person. All right. Waiting with bated breath for that. Um, <laughs> looking forward to seeing everybody in person again. Uh, if there are no more further items up for business or uh, comments or questions, it is time to adjourn. Thank you very much for being here, everyone. Thank you very much for showing up, Asheville and uh, Elena. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Councilwoman Rooney, for your service. Thank you, Sarah, for your service. And thank you all the commissioners who keep on showing up and dedicating their time energy and focus to this commission it was with deep great appreciation of your service and your dedication keep it real Asheville we are adjourned